Well, MLB's fanatics problem has somehow got worse. Guys, I'm sure you've seen it's been one of the bigger stories here in the month of February. The just debacle that's going on with MLB and fanatics designing the jerseys, the terrible quality of them. We know about the fonts on the back and the font, honestly, my opinion of it. If it was just one team that had their jerseys like that with the really crooked, you know, kind of lettering, I would think it's kind of cool. But the fact that it's all of the MLB teams, it really is just uh, really cheap. And it, But it's gotten worse, right? Because we all know the quality is terrible. People are saying they need to redo the jerseys completely before the season. But look at these new photos we got of the pants. You can literally, during interviews see right through the pants look at the guy on the left looks like he's wearing a bikini and I mean some of these photos I'm not gonna I'm not gonna show some of them you can see guys nuts I mean it's just it is so bad how did these things get okayed and then people are arguing oh it's Nike's fault for the pants no this is fanatics that Nike just puts their name on these jerseys the logo on the jerseys this is 100% fanatics quality and you can tell they're just extremely cheaply made. So we thought it was bad enough with the numbers and how curved they were and how weird it was on the back. It's actually even worse because you can see guys with their shirts tucked in. It looks horrible. The presentation of this is just pathetic for MLB, a multi-billion dollar league. I mean, people were already calling for these to be removed before... I mean, people were already calling for these to be removed before... We got a look and saw how bad the pants were. Trey Turner comes out and says, I know everyone hates them. We all liked what we had. We understand business, but I think everyone wanted to keep it the same way for the most part with some tweaks here or there. They're trying to make the jerseys and the pants lighter, but in doing so, they've completely watered down the overall product. And you can see even the intricacies of these jerseys, the Philadelphia Phillies in-game jerseys, don't appear to be chain-stitched, something that's been a hallmark of the Phillies jerseys for decades. So there are the new ones, and you can just tell the lines in the jerseys appear a lot darker, almost like they've been photoshopped on versus what the Philly jer Phillies jerseys used to be. And yeah, th this is probably the best part of the whole debacle. Fanatics new jerseys are so trash that their customer service team is responding, oops, that looks wrong, please contact us so we can replace your screwed up jersey, not realizing they're replying to a photo of an actual MLB player's jersey. The Fanatics support team is scrambling, trying to apologize to everyone, and apparently somebody posted a major league player's jersey, and Fanatics in an auto-reply under it said, we're sorry your jersey sucks, please message us, when in reality it was an MLB player's real jersey. That is how bad the debacle's gotten, and then you can see Fanatics, they haven't tweeted, or I don't know, posted, whatever you want to call it, since the 15th, about eight days ago. And you can see they just got ratioed to hell, 216 replies versus five ret retweets and only 18 likes. So we'll have to see what happens in terms of fanatics, but I would assume there's going to have to be some type of massive recall or something when it comes to these jerseys. It was one thing with the weird, you know, kind of curved back of the jerseys. That, that was very strange. But on top of that, the quality of the pants and seeing through them. And someone else was saying in, in some of the tweets like, oh, you could see through normal white pants in perfect lighting. No, that's not how... The, these things are completely different. You can tell. The dude looks like he's got a friggin' bikini on. It's a problem and it's different. And the quality of it is just terrible. So I would assume MLB's got... They've still got time to do something you would think with the regular season not starting for over a month. Look, especially nowadays with this Fanatics debacle, the secondary markets are going to be so much better for jerseys. Even the quality on these jerseys than buying it for $199.99 off of MLB.com. Another thing that I wanted to say, so yesterday we had MLB spring training start. It was the first game. There was just one game on the schedule. You know, you get those rare late February spring training games. It's kind of fun, you know, to see the nice weather, the game going on at around three, four o'clock in the afternoon. 
and it was on ESPN, and it kind of brought me back to a time when I was younger, and I remember watching some spring training games on ESPN, but how about what they did with the game yesterday? So it was the top of the first inning, and before we could even watch the first pitch, they're already doing an interview with Fernando Tatis. I know I'm going to sound like an old man, I get it, but like, do we really need these interviews where these guys are in the outfield just getting berated with questions and they just don't want to do an interview and it's the first inning, the first pitch, and they're already doing their little side cam where we have to show Fernando Tatis in the outfield, sit around and do nothing, and he has to take up half of the camera. What are we doing? It's dumb. It just, it, it adds nothing to the product. But this is the issue with MLB to where we're so overstimulated with dopamine. At baseball is such a sport based around patience that with young people, it's just not going to happen. So they're trying to do 50 different things. The pitch clock was a great addition to try and get younger people into the sport and just move the games along and make them better. I agree. My issue with the pitch clock more so relates to the start times of games because they pushed a bunch of the games up. It doesn't make sense to do that now because games only last two and a half hours. Move the start times back to 7.05. I was talking about this in my scheduling corks video. I don't understand why they don't move the start times back to 7.05. They're all at weird times like 6.40, 6.35. If the game is only taking two and a half hours, you can push the start time back. I'm sure it's all based on views, but it is still annoying. But either way, just I, I thought that was so annoying. We're trying to just enjoy a peaceful MLB spring training game, trying to watch the first few innings. It's sunny, it's nice, and we got to watch Fernando Tatis Jr. It, but it just it adds nothing to the. Pro I know they're like, oh, we want to market our players, but it's just stupid. Like you, you, half of your screen is just showing Tatis in the outfield. Why do we need to see that? What is the purpose of it? But it's this overstimulation thing. Every second there has to be 50 screens. Something needs to be happening or else you're not going to catch people's attention in the modern day and age. This is another thing I've been meaning to talk about for a while after Manfred mentioned it. Would a free agent signing deadline fix the MLB offseason or just punish players? Certainly this is something you have to try and do if you are MLB. And Manfred, and they are trying to do this. It's the players' union that's not interested in a, in a deadline. But what a terrible offseason that MLB has to where th there is no free agency, period. None of these, a lot of the big name players don't sign. And it just ends up dragging on and dragging on. And oh, Cody Bellinger still isn't signed. Oh, Blake Snell still isn't signed. You, you, it would be so much better for the sport and for eyeballs to put a deadline on it. Just like, I mean, look at NBA and the frenzy that they have over like in early July, like a one week, two week time period. The amount of publicity they get just from that in their off season after the season is over compared to what MLB is doing, it's not even close. This is an unfortunate situation with the players' union and players holding out. And, and it, I feel like players lose leverage the longer they sit around and do nothing. And how many times do we see the pitchers wait to sign into March and then they're not even ready for opening day? That should never happen if you're perfectly healthy and you're 27 years old and you're in your prime, but you're holding out for one extra million dollars. I understand the idea behind it. It's a business move, but I think it's just ridiculous and I would hope this would somehow be solved. But again, MLB could use something to liven up the offseason but I think a signing deadline is the wrong way to go about it. The penalties for not signing before the deadline have to be equally hard on the team as the player. Otherwise, it would just be a mechanism teams use to squeeze players into below market contracts. I don't understand this. This will not only force players to sign, but it will also incentivize teams to actually give their best offer in a certain period. It's a two-way street. And to me, anyways, it feels like players lose leverage as the offseason drags on into spring training and as many of these contract situations that aren't resolved continue on, like, like with Blake Smith Snell, especially with pitchers, I guess they just sit at home during spring training and hope a team that they're negotiating with has a big injury. But either way, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you follow me on X. Link to that's always in the description.